Hey guys, it's Cass and welcome to my 2024 Goodreads inspired reading challenge where I'm going to read both 2022 and 2023 top books. So let's discuss. Quickly, <laughs> I want to say I have a two month old that is trying her best to chill with dad. If you can hear her crying right now in the background, I apologize. Um, but he's she's trying her best with him so I could film this so we're going to get through this as fast as we can but first a few disclaimers I am amateur as far as booktube world is like as far as the booktube world goes um I do these challenges honestly to figure out like what genres I even like because I've only really taken reading seriously uh for the last four years in my adult life uh two I'm a slow reader um, I don't like to try to keep up with everyone and what they're reading, dozens of books each month. I'm not, my goals every year aren't over a hundred books. That's just not realistic and I'm not pushing myself to get there. I genuinely do best going slow most of the time and trying to savor the books and not rush through them just to hit the numbers. Also, like I said, I just had a baby so we go slow with everything around here right now. Three, if I don't like something that you love, or you hate something at five star, it's nothing personal, um, no hard feelings, okay? Okay. And for last but not least, always check your trigger warnings um, on any and all books to kind of protect yourself. This is supposed to be fun, so let's be safe. Timestamps down below and let's go. So welcome to my 2024 reading challenge. Uh, each year I have been kind of coming up with my own reading challenge that helps me to hit my reading goals that I set on Goodreads every year. Um, the first few years it started out and went like kind of most people just trying to read more books from more genres, trying to read more and more each year, always upping my goal. And then I kind of just had the realization that I'm more of a slow reader and I like to have achievable goals and I still want to enjoy my reading and not rush through anything to just get a number. I don't always want to be pushing to do more and achieve more. I just want to enjoy my reading and I think that is a really big like key important factor to me now. So originally in 2022 I decided that for 2023 I would read one book each month with the month itself in the title of the book. Um, but in adding that challenge and sourcing the books, I also found out I was pregnant. So the 60 book goal I crushed in 2022 got sliced by like more than half. Um, and it only became 24 books. So that had me reading one book each month with the title and the name, and then giving me the space to read another book that wasn't really part of the challenge per se, I guess. But I kind of, uh, I kind of called that challenge that I did in 2023 a fail and I'll iCard it so you can see why if you're interested. But now on to my reading challenge for 2024. My personal challenge uh, and I guess or goal is to read not only top rated books from 2022 but top rated books from 2023 uh, at least rated on Goodreads um, simultaneously uh, and I say I say top rated books and not the top book of each genre because I realized again with the challenge last year like I really need to be interested in or like the book for it to kind of be worth the challenge to me per se because uh, last year like I said if you watch it when I, I carded it um, I felt like I kind of tortured myself a little bit for the majority of my reading that kind of existed all in 2023 and that's no way to live so I don't plan to do that again which is why I say top rated. However we also have like a little mini snafu that has occurred. Uh, I was planning to like kind of go in a way to compare, I guess compare, I say that lightly, I just want to read books but to kind of compare the top 2022 books with the top 2023 books based on the genre but Goodreads kind of decided to change some of the genres and like fully nix others entirely during the voting in t at the end of 2023. Um, and so some like kind of don't quite line up, but I think I only ended up picking up one or two of those genres that I have to kind of do a little switcheroo for and I'll talk about those a little bit more as we get into those. With a baby that will basically be under one year old the entire year, I am again not shooting for the stars here with my reading goal. 
Um, but I think I'm gonna go for three books shooting for that a month, which amounts to 36 in the entire year, 2024. Um, so it would give me my challenge for 2024, my 2022 top read, my 2023 top read in the same genre. And then to kind of break it up, another book entirely that's maybe a different genre, or I'm really trying to get and start a local like mom's book club and we're kind of in the works of it but it's slow going so i'm hoping i'll be able to pick that up and kind of add that as my other book as well um one thing i did want to say and point out though is that my 2022 books are all physical books whereas my 2023 books are all going to be via audiobook so i hope i'm hoping like that doesn't do a disservice to it because to kind of make it a little more evenly matched if i can find an audiobook of these i will pair the audiobook and the physical book together um if i could find a physical book like at my library or super cheap like second hand um, i will try to pick that up so i could do that simultaneously as well because i know personally for me i have sometimes a harder time focusing more on what's happening in the book when it's an audiobook only um so i'm trying to like factor in where that might mess me up and i'm trying to be kind of proactive about that kind of as everybody says without further ado let's just jump right in these are not in any specific order of the way i will be reading them i'm just gonna pick a book and what genre that fell into within the goodreads kind of voting um that's the one I end up picking. Um, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I don't remember the synopsis of anything, but I did pick books at the time when I was picking them uh, that were of great interest to me based on the other ones. Um, and I will say right now, romance is not one of the genres, which turned into romance, fantasy, and romanticy in 2023s. But like I said, let's get into it. So for fiction in 2022, I chose Other Birds. This is missing its dust jacket, which is kind of disappointing because that's, I'm a big like window eye shopper, kind of like visual, I guess, shopper um, as a graphic artist and stuff that kind of plays a big factor in me just in general in life. Um, so I was kind of disappointed when I got this one from Goodreads and it was missing the dust jacket, but so I couldn't even read you the synopsis on here if I wanted to. But for fiction in 2022 is Other Birds, and the fiction for 2023 is The Wishing Game. For the mystery and thriller category, I chose The Maid. Uh, I've heard iffy things about this. I heard a lot of people either loved it or hated it. Um... It says a dead body is one mess she can't clean up on her own. So, again, I don't know much about it. I will be deep diving more into what they're about and kind of comparing them to each other. I'm hoping to maybe do like a wrap up or a book vlog or something every single month. And then the choice for a mystery and thriller of 2023 is the only one left. The 2022 choice the for fantasy is The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. Um, I've heard this is just really wholesome and cozy. Cute. I know a little bit about it by watching spoiler free just people talking about it over the last year. Um, I heard there's some romance aspect in here that people really loved which again romance is not my thing at least unless i'm somehow proven differently i will continue to say that um so that honestly is a little off-putting to me and doesn't make me super excited to read this but i'm also love the cover so <laughs> before i get too far uh the fantasy 2023 is starling house which I realized that I already did an audiobook, so I didn't want to just count that and call it done. 
I also considered re-listening to it for this and calling that good. Um, however, uh, in the fantasy for 2023 was also Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. And for Christmas, I went and bought somebody else some book for Christmas and I ended up picking that up uh, because it was buy one get one 50% off and my other, I have two, four, six, eight other books over there for my TBR for the year and oh, I hope I can get through them. Um, but yeah, these are the two choices for, uh, what did I say? Fantasy. For horror for 2022's top pick, I am going with Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. And then for 2023, I think I'm going to go with Holly by Stephen King or Reformatory by, I think it's Tanareva Do, I think. Tanareva. I don't remember the exact author. I haven't even been saying the authors to this point so far, but... Um, I'm a little torn between Holly. I've never read a Stephen King before, um, but I've heard Reformatory is more like real life horrors in the way of just like very awful, very horrible things that have actually happened. So I feel like it's more like a historical fiction, at least what I've heard from it. Um, Personally, I feel like I should lean reformatory because it basically matches this cover from what my memory serves. Um, but I'm torn between that and Holly, so you'll have to stay tuned for whatever month I read that, and then we'll end up comparing those. Again, like I said, I don't know what month I'm going to read what genre. That's just going to kind of be mood-based, I think. My 2022 pick for nonfiction is Atlas of the Heart. I have heard great things about this. This is a lot chunkier than I thought it was going to be, and it's hardback. Um, but it seems to have a lot of sections like this where an entire page is just like a colored thing, or there's pictures and imagery in here. I don't um, know much. I can read this because it's really short on the back. It says, in Atlas of the Heart, Brown takes us on a journey through 87 of the emotions and experiences that define what it means to be human. As she maps the necessary skills and an actionable framework for meaningful connection, she gives us the language and tools to access a universe of new choices and second chances. A universe where we can share and steward the stories of our bravest and most heartbreaking moments with one another in a way that builds connection. So, Atlas of the Heart for 2022, and then for 2023 is On Our Best Behavior. I'm really kind of excited to compare these ones specifically because I kind of thoroughly enjoy nonfiction. I always want to learn and grow and know more. For my 2022 science fiction pick, it is Sea of Tranquility. Again, I've heard wonderful things about this and I've kind of just somehow had a pull to want to read this since I've seen the cover of it and I don't really know specifically even what the book is about or why the cover is like so drawing to me. And then my science fiction pick for 2023 is In the Lives of Puppet Puppets In the Lives of Puppets by I think TJ Klune, which I didn't like it didn't dawn on me the author of this book until a little more recently and I'm kind of not thrilled at it because the other two books that I have read um I cannot think of the name of either of them now I gotta look them up uh his other books are The House in the Cerulean Sea and Under the Whispering Door um those books didn't really hit the mark for me so in the lives of puppets we'll see what happens but there is our science fiction picks I think this next genre, which is memoir, is one of my personal favorites. I love to read uh, and know more about people's stories and their struggles growing up and that, or just like in their life in general, um, and I just find them really easy to read and kind of 
the emotions feel more real which makes sense because it's real life for people um so my 2022 top pick for that is what my bones know i've heard nothing but great things about this again um i am really excited for this so we'll see about this one and then my 2023 memoir pick is you can make this place beautiful i don't know anything about this one i don't really again like i said and continue to say i don't really know anything about these books i just know when i read through all the top choices these were the ones that pulled to me the most so i'm excited for this genre really really excited And then this book is from one of the genres that Goodreads nixed for the year. It was poetry and I picked Call Us What We Carry. Um, I don't, uh, you know, I'm a little up and down about poetry. I don't quite connect with it, um, but I actually just got done reading uh, Dearly by, I am awful at remembering people's names. I just got done reading through the poem book Dearly by uh, Margaret Atwood. So uh, some of them were great, some of them not so much. Some of them just I don't understand like at all. So that's the thing. But I wanted to pick poetry specifically because my son is super into it um, and he likes to write poems. So I've been trying to get into the genre a little bit more to see if there's things that connect with me. I just think I'm a little too realist, which is weird because I'm such an emotionally based person. But something about poetry, I just, I'm reading to be literal sometimes I think about things, which is a downfall and I'm hoping to try to break that kind of like habit within my reading. Um, but anywho, before I get on a big tangent, the 2022 pick for poetry was Call Us What We Carry that category and genre has been nixed in the new voting system or the new Goodreads system. So instead of poetry, I had to choose between like romance, romanticy, and humor. Um, and of course I'm gonna pick humor. So for humor for 2023, I picked strong female character, which I've heard phenomenal things about. So I'm excited for both of these, even though these genres are not at all. Next up is the debut novel category and for the 2022 system, if you keep seeing these, I just have the genre it is so I can line them up and make sure I'm reading them every year because these little have been sticking out of every book, but I digress. I chose um, for the debut novel for 2022, Daughter of the Moon Goddess. Beautiful cover. This does not excite me. I've heard okay things about it. Um, she's a little bit of a chunkier book than I'd like at over 500 pages. <sighs> it's just gonna get me a minute to get through it, but that's okay. My 2023 pick is Ink Blood Sister Scribe, I think is the name of it. I'm going kind of off memory on these since I don't have the physical book and I'm just throwing in the image here. So we'll see about these. I feel like these ones might take me the longest to get through. Up next is historical fiction, and my pick for 2022 is Carrie Soto is Back. If I understand correctly, this is technically a sequel to... I don't remember the name of the book that I never read. <laughs> um, I know she wrote Daisy Jones and the Six. I don't remember what the... Oh, Malibu Rising. I may be wrong, but I heard that this was a sequel to Malibu Rising, but it could stand alone. We'll see how that goes. I have no interest in reading Malibu Rising if that's the case, so we'll see about this. My historical fiction pick for 2023 is Wayward. Absolutely love this cover. Um, this was actually the winner for the debut and the historical fiction, um, but I didn't want to pick it for both again. Um, and so uh, if there's any of the books that end up being like audiobooks that I end up loving, I will f buy the physical copy if I can't find it through the library or something and um, just to actually have them. And I have said uh, several times historical fiction is not my genre, but I think, and maybe I'll be proved wrong or proved right, I think 
what I had always been meaning to say and kind of mucked up was it's historical work, period. That is not my thing. It's war related, crime related. That is not my thing. Historical fiction based on some of the books that I've read and liked that have technically fallen under, under the historical fiction category. I haven't hated, so maybe I'm wrong about that. And these two books give me another chance to see how that goes. My last two, uh, which I only picked 12 genres, I don't even know if I said that, are YA related. So the first one is YA fantasy, and I picked, I think it's Gallant is how you say it, by V.E. Schwab. I am kind of excited about this. It says in the back, everything casts a shadow, even the world we live in. I have liked V.E. Schwab's writing, so I'm excited to get into more writing by authors that I've liked versus the T.J. Klune one um, with, what book was it? I have it written here. With uh, In the Lives of Puppets, like, I'm not excited to read from that author again, but I did like V.E. Schwab, so I'm excited to give this a shot. And then my YA fantasy for 2023 is A Study in Drowning, which I've heard phenomenal things about, so I'm really excited to get to that as well. But that's my YA fantasy. And then last, but certainly not least, I absolutely love this cover. This is my YA fiction section, and I chose All My Rage for 2022, and then for 2023, I chose Forget Me Not. Um, I saw it with this cover, but a lot of the covers that I've been seeing for it have like uh, two younger, like a female and a male on it. And like that does not excite me, that cover. Again, leans very romance to me and I'm not thrilled with that at all. So uh, if by some chance I love it, I will be looking for this specific cover. So that is my breakdown of not really much to say about the books at this point of my 2024 Goodreads reading challenge that encompasses both 2022 reading and 2023 reading. Um, I am thoroughly excited to get more like to more modern reads, newer reads, more recent things that have come out because I think I really struggled with that in the challenge that I did in 2023 which I, uh, I'll link below but I, I carded earlier which was my 2023 challenge with the months themselves and the titles of the books a lot of those books were older and i struggled and so i'm just kind of excited also to get into some books that are like more mainstream that i'm seeing people review and i know people that have read them or are reading them and so i could feel a little more in the loop maybe and caught up um i might be trying to push for like new releases for our book club if i could get that off the ground and going um, but that's all stuff that will come, hopefully, if I can keep it up, is a monthly like breakdown of a book wrap-up or something to that degree. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching, and we'll see where this goes. And I'm so excited to see everybody's 2024 challenges. Mine is the 36 books, the 2022 books, the 2023 books, top books, and then hopefully something fun and then hopefully a local book club with other moms. So I'm excited. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, that's it. Hope you're well, babes, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!